welcome to episode 59 of the Can On Yarns podcast. My name is Lynn and I'm coming to you from Cardiff in Wales in the UK and this is a knitting, spinning, sometimes crochet, sometimes dyeing but always fibre based podcast. So how are you? It has been ages. Again, if you are a returning viewer or a regular viewer, thank you so so much for sticking with me and I apologise again for the, for the big gap in podcasting but Life is just crazy at the moment. I think this is the first weekend in a couple of months since I last podcast that we haven't had to do something, go somewhere, pick something up, pick someone up, take the car into the garage, go to a graduation, hooray! Um, but yeah, lots and lots of stuff has been going on. All good, all lovely, so thank you for those messages, just checking in with me, seeing if I'm okay. Yeah, it's just life. And I think because I work full time, my weekends are the place where all those kind of errandsy bits get put. I'm sure a lot of you are the same. So yes, yeah, sometimes there are no weekends free. And if you are a new viewer, hello, welcome. Thank you so, so much for giving me a try. I know at the moment, my goodness, there is so much vlogmas shenanigans going on. It's nice to kind of see so much knitting out there. So yes, thank you for, for joining me. Thank you for spending some time with me. And um, yeah, I've got some bits and bobs to tell you because I can't quite remember what I told you last time. I should have watched the last episode really but I think yeah I think there's um, a couple of new cast ons uh, a prospective cast on some news about what I've been up to um, yeah we'll just find our way through it if that's all right with you I'm gonna take a sip of coffee my throat still isn't right to be honest since since the whole COVID thing I still have my little bit of a cough, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, I kind of have to keep uh, wet, wetting the whistle, as they say. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, knitting stuff, what have I been up to? So it is the 10th of December, I think. Yes, the 10th of December. Uh, and so I'm trying to get a little bit Christmassy, still in work, so just trying to kind of think about what I might knit or whatever over the, over the holidays, over the break. So uh, first things first maybe is to keep get you up to date with my half and half wrap. Half and half wrap? Half and half shawl. Half and half wrap I think. Um, and yeah, it's going very well. I have finished the darker colour. So this is where I am. I've done the darker colour and this is this wedge. And now I've just started this lighter colour which is the other half. Hence the half and half or half and half as we say in Cardiff chips and rice never mind doesn't matter um so yes now i think i've done it wrong and so i've sort of gone ah and put it in the bag and haven't really picked it up for a couple of weeks i think i've done it because everybody that has done it has said oh my goodness it's huge and mine isn't huge by any stretch of the imagination so i know i did the smaller size but i think I have done half as many wrap and turns as I should have. Now, if you've done it, or if you know, you kind of keep going back along those short rows, give me quite itchy nose, um, to, to make that wedge shape. Now, I've been doing a wrap and turn and then, and then knit one, so that maybe it's every two stitches rather than every stitch that I'm wrapping and turning on. And I think that's because I've been doing German short row, and maybe I've misinterpreted the pattern. So I don't know, but it's certainly not gonna be huge. I think I'll be able to block it out quite a bit because it's garter stitch, so it should be able to block quite a bit. This edge might be a little bit tight though, I don't know. And have I used as much as I thought I was supposed to? Yeah, I, you're supposed to use 200 grams, I think. And I have, that's all I've got left of the, the darker color. So I, yeah, it can't be far off because if I hadn't, if I'd have done every stitch a wrap and turn, then I would definitely have run out. So maybe I have done it right, I don't know. Maybe this is the smaller size. So yeah, that's a long way of saying, so I've lost my kind of mojo with this because I think I've done it wrong. Maybe I haven't, maybe I just need to kind of keep on. And it's not gonna be a massive, massive wrap, but it'll certainly keep me nice and cozy, especially with the double color. But of course, if you fold it in half, then it's not going to be as long. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? We'll see, I shall persevere. And it is really, really simple knitting. I got a bit confused when I had to add the new color. 
and then work out the um, the uh, establishing the kind of the pattern, the row again. But yeah, other than that, it's a really, really lovely pattern to do because it's so simple in its construction, if, if it's right, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I will, that'll be a nice one over the, over the holidays when you've maybe had a glass or two of wine and um, you don't need to concentrate too much but you're watching a bit of a Christmas film. So, on that note, so, for those of you who are in the UK, I th well, maybe you can get it worldwide, I don't know. My husband is um, a writer and he's written, co-written a Christmas film that's on the telly, like proper. So we went, we went to see the um, preview of it in, they had a small cinema release and it's a Sky Cinema uh, piece of work. It's called A Christmas Number One. Um, it's very Christmassy, maybe have a box of hankies next to you. No spoilers. Um, but yeah, it's on Sky Cinema and Now TV, I think. A Christmas number one, and it's got Frida Pinto and you and Rion in it as the two leads. So yeah, check it out. We are very, very proud, very, very pleased. And it was lovely to kind of finally see his work up on the big screen, because if any of you are in the arts or whatever, you know that it's a very, very long process. So yes, so that's been really lovely. And the soundtrack has been released and Keris Matthews has recorded the um, the title song. She's a Welsh girl. Uh, so yeah, and you and Rion is a Welsh guy. So yeah, it's nice. It's really nice. So catch it if you can. Anyway, sorry, shameless, blo uh, shameless uh, plug there for that. So yeah, so that's what I'll be doing over Christmas, I think. A couple of glasses of wine, maybe a sherry or two, I will take up that project. But then I have done a lovely new cast on. So this is yarn and a pattern that I had decided I was going to do about two, three years ago now maybe when uh, I was in Oslo with work and I went to the lovely Varbit yarn shop with her logo. So this is the logo for Varbit yarns. Is it gonna focus? I don't know what is going on with my lighting today. It's quite a grey day out there and I don't think the um, the camera, etc., is coping very well. Uh, just like me. Um, so yes, this is the Fos Fosvine. I'll put it down below because there is no way that I've been able to pronounce it correctly. But it is a glory. So let me just show you how far I've got. Oh, look at this. So it is a combination of colour work and cable. Isn't that just pretty? It's very Christmassy actually. Uh, and it's three colours. So the main colour, which obviously I've gone for the, the kind of the light white cream sort of colour. And then um, it works with one, well two other colours. So I've chosen to do the, the main contrast colour in a variegated skein of yarn, which is hand dyed by Vabit. So yeah, these oranges and greens and reds. And then um, there's a, no, a small amount of other contrast and I've chosen to do it in this bright sort of berry red, which is a Rauma Phenol PT2. So yeah, sorry, the light's gone funny now. So a really deep red and then an orangey and greens against this, uh, this whiter backdrop. So I have very, very much enjoyed it. It's a really clear pattern. It is one of those ones that is the, the whole one more row, one more row thing. Um, yeah, and the cabling carries on down the body of the sweater. Nothing too major, but just, um, just enough to kind of keep a bit of texture. So I'm really, really looking forward to spending some time on this chart. This has been kind of, you know, my, my Saturday afternoon or whatever, being able to kind of sit down with the chart uh, for a couple of hours of an evening maybe and getting through this piece but if if you're like me and you like colour work charts and that sort of thing you can get completely absorbed in it and just do that one more row one more row so I'm looking forward to kind of getting this going and getting the body done because um, it is a very Christmas sweater will I finish it <laughs> by Christmas oh good grief no absolutely not but um we don't really get our cold, cold weather till January, February here. So hopefully it'll be done by, by January, February and when I need that coziness because it is really, um, it is a very rustic yarn and I've got a couple of sweaters in this sort of rustic yarn and when you first put them on, they're a bit like, oh, a bit 
itchy, uh, but once you've worn them a couple of times, I think the lanolin is, is released and they become softer and softer. They never feel like a merino, but they're not itchy at all. They kind of um, absorb or start to become much, much softer and they plume beautifully. So yeah, so that is a project that I'm very excited about and I don't think I've shown you that one. I think I was just about to cast on last time I podcast, excuse me. So yeah, <clears throat> that's that one. And then a Christmas cast and I haven't told you what I'm wearing. So this is, um, mm -mm -mm, it is Strange Brew Tin Can Knits uh, in John Arban Textiles Knit by Numbers and I wear this a lot. This is, oh gosh, two or three years ago now maybe. And we talk about that whole kind of coziness. This is, um, I don't think it is, I'm not sure if it's a merino or not, but it certainly pills. It pills quite a bit, um, <clears throat> but it is so soft, so cozy. I reach for this all the time. Always get some nice comments. I think this flash of green is really lovely. But yes, beautiful patterns by Tin Can Knits as always. But uh, yeah, the yarn is very, very cosy. But you do have to kind of uh, debobble it, defuzz it, what's it called, with the, the scraper. What's the scraper called? Don't know, doesn't matter. You know what I mean. Um, yes, yeah, so that's that. So Christmas cast on. Now, I am not normally one that plans a Christmas cast on. Um, why is that? I don't know. I don't know really, just either that I'm in the middle of a project or I don't think I'm going to get enough time or... However, this year I am going to do a Christmas cast on and I know the actual knitting law is that you have to have finished one sleeve on a sweater before you cast the next one but I think, yeah I'm pretty sure there's like a sub clause that says if it's Christmas, a sub Santa Claus uh, 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 sub Santa Claus that says well, if it's Christmas you're allowed a Christmas cast on even if you haven't finished the, um, the sleeve so that's lucky um, so yes I have been following um, forgive the pronunciation Nutidenyand Caroline I think her name is um, with fascination so she has this company in Denmark I think it is where they they focus on um, uh, ancient breeds, etc., and try and keep the, the yarn and the wool as pure as possible. Um, and she runs a Patreon account, um, and you can only access, really, her full videos if you are a patron. So, which I am and have been for hmm, probably since the summer, I'd say. Um, I find her videos fascinating. Uh, yeah, she's a curious lady, um, but her yarns, are just beautiful. The colour choices she, she puts together are really, really lovely. And I have never uh, purchased any of it. However, now I have. I finally took the plunge and ordered some, I think it was probably October, November. Yeah, because it was, it was out of my birthday money. Um, and thank you for all those birthday messages. There's quite a lot of November babies out there, it seems. So yay. Yay, November babies. Uh, there's quite a lot of us in the knitting community. I'm sure there's all month in the knitting community. But yeah, there was quite a lot of you that said, oh, I'm a November baby too. So yes, hey, look at us. Um, so yeah, I uh, did do the whole purchase thing. And it's a, a weird way of doing it. If you don't know, you have to kind of, it's a specific time that it goes out and you get a passcode for the website if you're a patron and then you can kind of go in and, and order what you want and then it kind of gets opened up to those who aren't patrons later on. So sometimes there's plenty, sometimes there's not very much at all depending on what she's done. So it's one of those sort of hit and miss, sometimes you can get stuff and sometimes you can't, which is all part of the game, I suppose. Um, but yes, so I, and it is um, pin roving. So it's not fully spun. So this is the colour I went for, and I can't even remember what the colour is called, if I'm honest. Oh no, maybe, 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 maybe. Uh, it is the, yes, that's right, tall bark, which I believe means pine tree in Danish. And the other one is glimped, so I think that's light, so this, this white one. So I chose a sweater quantity of the, the tall bark, 
which she said is like the colour of the bark of a pine tree. And it is, it's not great in this light as ever, but it's a sort of rusty, browny tone. Um, and it's this pin roving, and you can either do it single-stranded or double-stranded. Uh, so I've chosen to, to get enough to do a double-stranded one. And I got the, the lighter one just in case I wasn't sure what I wanted to do uh, with it, whether I wanted to do a, a colour work or because uh, I, I wasn't sure what pattern I wanted to do in it. So, uh, but now I know. So I am going to do, I did an Erst sweater, Erst Genser East sweater by um, Inge Semmingsen. That must have been a year ago, I think, uh, maybe, maybe 18 months ago. And it is a chunky, warm sweater. Um, if I can, I'll put a little picture of it here. Um, and I wear mine all the time it's so soft as in the the yarn i did it in um pt3 i think it is so it's a rustic yarn but it it softens up beautifully and it just feels so cozy because it's essentially an aran weight jumper and the style of it is beautiful and the it's got slightly balloon sleeves um yes and i wear it all the time so i think i'm going to make another one of those in these slightly deeper autumnal tones i think so yeah, I'm excited to use that. I haven't done an, anything in pin roving before. Um, I understand from my friend Carol, who's, who's knit quite a few bits and bobs in it, that it can be quite frustrating because as you kind of pull the ball, as you would do ordinarily, it will break very easily. So you've got to be quite careful. Um, but you just overlap it apparently and knit on. And you, loads of you have probably worked with this already. I'm very, very new to the party. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that, looking forward to a different type of yarn and one that has that sort of heritage to it and the, the real passion and commitment of Caroline, I think it's Caroline or Caroline uh, and her team at Newtoden. So yeah, so that'll be quite nice. Um, and I know she's got another lot out or has just done a shop update in December. But yeah, I will see how I get on with this. It's not the cheapest yarn in the world, um, but birthday and supporting a really, really important sort of heritage kind of business and, and fibres, etc. And interestingly, um, there was an article in the newspaper the other day about the Welsh wool board and, you know, the, the, the wool board uh has has kind of gone through many sort of regenerations and the the british wool industry isn't as strong as it used to be um and certainly the welsh wool industry isn't anywhere near as strong as it used to be and, and fleeces are losing their value all the time but there was a big thing about the the revival of that certainly with the welsh wool board and trying to kind of re-establish that um that fibre, connection to fibre in terms of not just for carpets, a lot of Welsh wool goes for carpets and tapestries, but to try and kind of revive the the industry. And I think us knitters are part of that, you know, the fact that um, a lot of spinning and knitting has is, is always been there, but really seems to be uh, growing in community. So maybe that's part of that, um, that world and we might see a bit more value put on fleeces fiber and those sort of home crafts i hope so anyway but yeah as i say it just caught my eye in the paper the other day um yeah so and on that note then of fleece and fiber i think that's all the kind of the knitting bits and bobs i've got a hat to finish um i've probably got a pair of socks to finish somewhere i've got another shawl to finish let's not let's not unravel that now Shh. let's just ignore <laughs> all that unfinished stuff that's tucked away somewhere um what else yeah so on to, to fiber and spinning so i went uh, on a wonderful spinning retreat with the the ladies from fiber hut which is based in evesham um, they invited myself and carol along for a spinning weekend unfortunately carol wasn't able to come but i went along to this wonderful um house stanford oh my goodness you see, if it's not like yesterday, it's gone. Um, I'm hoping that I will be able to add the video about that beautiful weekend after this. If I don't manage to kind of edit it all together, I'll put it as a separate uh, vlog, but I'm hoping that I can kind of, I'll show you the spinning weekend at the end of this um, podcast. So we'll go into that towards the end of it. Um, but yeah, Stanford, Stanford. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to have a look, bear with. 
Stanton House, that's what it's called, Stanton House uh, in the Cotswolds. So um, yeah, it was a house run by a lady called Mary Osborne, a guild house, an arts and crafts house. And she, uh, she met um, Mahatma Gandhi in the 1930s and loved the idea that there was, um, there was something spiritual in the, in the most menial of tasks of cleaning or washing or making. So she set up and she was uh, fascinated by the idea of religious retreats. So she decided that she wanted to set up um, a, a sort of a craft retreat, a crafting retreat, um, which she did. And she she uh, kind of recruited a team of volunteers and they found this house in Stanton in the Cotswolds. And she built this retreat, which is called Stanton House. Uh, and it was used as a craft retreat. It was used as... Um, she did summer holidays for disadvantaged children from um, disadvantaged areas of London and across the country. So yeah, a real philanthropist um, and a, a very generous woman, it seems. Uh, and the house opened, I think, in the 1970s. So yeah, it's a beautiful house and everything in there is just so wonderfully created. And she was a spinner, a passionate spinner. Um, and I think, uh, that Mahatma Gandhi's spinning wheel, he visited the house, is in the house uh, somewhere, uh, or certainly part of the estate somewhere. Um, but yeah, a beautiful area of the world anyway. Stanton is the most idyllic village. Um, and then this guild house that kind of sits above the village and has beautiful views and yeah, is used as a, I guess, a, as a, you can rent it out for spinning retreats or for holidays or whatever. But yeah, we had a wonderful, wonderful weekend and I hope that I can kind of put the, the footage after this, as I said, um, and a fantastic group of women. My goodness, so much talent in that room and generosity of skills and time and learning. Um, and one of the ladies that was with us, Betty, she knew Mary uh, and had been to the house and, and was a family friend of, of Mary. So that was like incredible to have that understanding that she knew her and knew what she was about and the house itself, she'd been there before. Um, yeah, so it was really, really, really lovely weekend. So if any of you ladies are watching, thank you so much for your warm, warm welcome. Um, and yes, we must definitely do it again next year. Um, yes, so I, on that uh, retreat, and Gay, who runs the Fibre Hut, she gave us all a little gift of a, a bag of fluff, which was beautiful. And then we were tasked with making some Rolags. There were several blending boards around that people had made, had brought. So yeah, these were my little Rolags. And how shameful, I think everybody else spun them up whilst they were away at the weekend. I was too busy talking and eating cake and whatnot. Um, so yes, I haven't even kind of, I don't think I've got my spinning wheel out since I've been back really. Uh, so maybe that's certainly a task for this Christmas break as well. So yeah, so those are my Rolags that I mated, ma mated? Made out of my bag of, bag of fluff. And um, yeah, it was great. It was a really, really lovely weekend. So hopefully I will put the footage at the end of this. But do check it out, check her out. What an incredibly um, inspirational woman. Mary Osborne. Um, yes, so <laughs> what else have I got to tell you? Um, that's about it, really. Like I say, weekends have been busy. Uh, in terms of knitting and spinning, that's it. So if you're leaving us there, thank you very much indeed for dropping by, and I will catch up with you soon, I hope. Um, if you are staying to hear what I've been up to in terms of life in general, um, yes. We've had, uh, my, both my children have graduated, so that's been lovely uh, to kind of go to their events that have been very, very delayed, bless them. Um, so that was good to celebrate their achievements. Um, what else have I done? I've gone on the spinning weekend. Uh, work has been crazy. Uh, I went to Manchester. I went to Manchester for a few days um, for the UCAS fairs. So these are, I work in a university and these fairs that UCAS is sort of, if you don't know, is a sort of um, the bridging gap between uh, schools and sixth forms and colleges and students that want to go into university. They sort of, they are the sort of, uh, they organise all that, the applications and students can choose three universities and they have to apply through UCAS and then UCAS 
gets involved with the university. So they're sort of the stepping stone. Um, you can only really apply to a university directly as a mature student, I think. If you're coming through the kind of school system, then you have to go through UCAS. So UCAS do these big events um, where all the universities or a lot of universities go and kind of uh, advertise their courses, etc. So we were at one of these events in Manchester, um, which is north of England. Um, but, you know, England isn't very big, really. So it's not too far away from everything in the UK. It's, yeah, it's, it's north. Um, but yeah, it was so funny on the stand because you get a lot of students that come past and, oh, right, what course do you do? And we talk about our performing arts courses and what we do and da da da. And they say, oh, great, where are you? And we say, oh, we're in Wales. And they're like, Wales? <laughs> like it's thousands and thousands of miles away. Um, and you're like, yeah, it, it probably takes you as long to get to where we are in Wales as it would to get you to, to, to London, really. It's not, it's just a different way. Um, yeah, that always makes me laugh. So a lot of people, you know, they, they know Wales well because a lot of people kind of come through and go on holiday in, in Wales. But yeah, those students that are always like, what? Wales? It always, always makes me laugh. I do enjoy that. Um, but then it's great because then we kind of get people that kind of come down uh, to Wales to study and they are, yeah, they're just obsessed with it and it's the, the beauty in the countryside, etc. So, yeah, so we did that for a few days. Um, and then what have we been up to? Got the tree yesterday. And when I think back to where we were last Christmas in, in we didn't have a kitchen. We had building work done last Christmas. So we had no kitchen. We were washing up dishes in the bath. We didn't have a cooker. We didn't have a washing machine. Um, yeah, so this Christmas is like every moment of warmth or being able to, to make a bit of toast easily or dishes in the dishwasher or wash our clothes is just heavenly we went to get the tree yesterday uh last night we haven't put up the tree yet but we went to get it yesterday and um normally i don't know what you're like but it's that event where you go this tree and then somebody else has to hold it and you look at it from a different angle and then you turn around and then you go back to the first one and then you get the other person to hold it and then you hold it for the other person and then you twist it around a bit and okay you know all that the pressure um of getting a Christmas tree. Uh, yeah, this year, considering the year we had last year, it was like, right, we'll have this one. Would you want me to hold it and have a look? No, it's fine. Whatever, anything is going to be fine. So there's been a real um, appreciation, I think, for what this Christmas will be. And if it ends up being small because of any more lockdowns or restrictions on numbers, if it ends up being big, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter for us this year. The fact that we will be able to cook and sit at a table and have a Christmas tree, which we couldn't have last year because where the Christmas tree goes, goes normally was a fridge. Um, yeah, it's going to be a joy. So yes, uh, my son is home anyway. My daughter comes home on Christmas Eve um, for a few days, hopefully. Hasn't had a schedule yet, that sort of thing. So yeah, we're good. My husband's in a Christmas show at the Sherman Theatre in Cardiff, which you are doing Christmas Carol. So he's busy um, out most evenings performing. But yeah, we're all good and I hope you are all well too. So I hope you've got some nice Christmas plans and I hope to be able to catch up with you before the big day arrives. Um, so yeah, whether you celebrate Christmas or not, I hope that you're going to get a little bit of festive holiday period, uh, knitting, spinning, crochet, dyeing, whatever is your crafty bag. I hope you get some time to kind of sit and do that. Um, yes, yeah, so I will wind up there. I've probably been very rambly. I do apologise. And again, I apologise for the big delay in getting back to you. But yes, hopefully I'll catch up with you again before Christmas. So there may be a little spinning video after this, or I might do it as a separate blog. I don't really want to take a huge amount of time sat at the computer again today because it's been quite a computer heavy week. But yeah, either way, I will get that spinning footage to you. Have a little look, explore her, explore the, what she did. It's quite remarkable. All right then, I'll let you go. I'll speak to you soon. Dior pao. See you soon. Bye.